Hello and welcome to Funky Fox Gaming. We are back on What Remains of Edith Finch. Now, last time around we found out what happened to Walter and Sam. Um, so after Barbara's death, Walter essentially made himself a hermit. Um, Edie knew about it. Um, I'm not sure anybody else did. Oh, actually, no, I think Dawn did. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, Walter just holed himself up under the house. Um, had his own sort of little bed, couch, toilet, shower set up. Um, tons of storage with loads of canned and box food. And then eventually gave up of being scared of essentially what killed these two, like the family cares. But instead of deciding to go back out through the secret fridge door, um, broke through a wall um, onto some train tracks and got hit by a train straight away. Very normal. Um, and then Sam died taking Dawn on a hunting trip, encouraging Dawn to hunt a deer. Dawn shot it. Deer wasn't dead and knocked Sam off the cliff. So he died there and then, fortunately. So, we are done with this generation. Um, we only kind of touched on what killed Sven. I don't know if we're going to get more later on. But we are now going to move on to the next generation. Uh, it's the one before Edith, the game's namesake. Um, I'm going to guess... That we'll find out about Gregory when he was first to die. Although, having said that, we didn't find these in any particular order because we went Molly, Calvin, Barbara, and Walter. I think we'll get Dawn last. Yeah, let's uh, let's carry on with the game and find out. So we left it in Sam's room, and there was a little secret passage here. This family in their uh, secret passages. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Wait, where am I now? Finch control. Oh no. Baby Gregory. So they divorce. Oh. Didn't mean to do that. So Gregory died at one. To Sam Finch, a lawsuit has been filed against you. You have 20 calendar days after the summons is served. Uh, to file a written response to the attached complaint petition with the clerk of this court. So she filed for divorce. What he did. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Oh no. I think he saw things the rest of us don't.
Hand over Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. imagination whatever it was he saw it sure made him happy uh -uh. to land back on the whale again. Upside down duck. So it sounds like um, Sam and Kay were having issues quite early on, so before any deaths had happened. Control the jump. I know how silly it sounds. But I worried about a baby being too happy. But I could feel her slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. If I hadn't called that night. Damn it. Oh no. I don't want Gregory to hear this. I wish he could have told us about the world he saw. everything. But I know what happened wasn't your fault. I'm 
sure he's happy. And he'd want you to be happy too. Good oh. luck, Kay. Love, Sam. Oh, Gregory. That's really sad. Even though the bath time is quite whimsical, it's really sad. Oh, that's kind of weird. He gave them all... Sort of army bunk stuff. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... Mm, Gus went punk. <laughs> Very rebellious against the army dad. Oh god. I would hate to live in a house like that. So every day, raise flag at half seven, breakfast eight, quiet time at 11 p.m. So bedtime. It's quite late actually for kids. Um, so Don had to sweep and do the trash. Gus had to mop and mow the yard. And Greg, hey yeah, baby. 100 times jump rope, 150 times jumping jacks, 100 push ups, 100 crunches, run to mailbox and back. All of that is cool. I'm assuming that's how I get to the next area, so I will do that in a second. That's a good thing to have, though. No playing outside without permission, no answering the door for strangers, no messes after dark, all chores before dark, and respect others. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I remember. I now remember. pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh. Sam remarried. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. <laughs> picked up and panicked geese appeared and quickly went but all the humans did that day was go inside the tent oh oh don't say he's gonna get electrocuted by flying the kite
rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. Okay, let's do it. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Wait, so what actually happened then? Did you get pulled out into the sea? Or was it lightning? I never quite explained that. Head up. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. <sighs> At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Weird combination of like real pictures and religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Um, like game artwork, because that's that's clearly a real picture, real picture, real picture, real picture. But then a lot of the other stuff. Hey, Miss Paul. Uh, a lot of the other stuff is just game art. So she flew to India in 87. How old was she? 19. Gap year. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Okay. And uh, now I've got to climb up again. But that was worth it. So I'm not quite sure how Gus died. Never quite explained. I mean, I know like other ones have never actually shown any death. They've all been somewhat whimsical, but that one like literally did not My mom quite. moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Solar panels. Uh, very dangerous. 
dangerous. When my dad died, I don't think Mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. I mean, did it, though? So, talking 19 years old, what was it? It was 87. So there was only... Well, Walter was underground, so didn't need to do that. So it's just Edie and Dawn and their three kids. When Sanjay, Sanjay must have died 99 at the latest. The, the earliest, sorry. Oh, well, no, 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 I guess 98, maybe. So it's just the fact that they're preserving every single room. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. It's like a little classroom. But it didn't last. Classification of living things. this from my science uh, lesson days in school. Oh, here we go. Hundreds of relief volunteers are injured or dead of a second earthquake. When, though? Oh, she wrote a teaching book. Can't quite see a date on there, unfortunately, so I don't know when he died. Sanjay, I mean. Whoa. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. And 
no other thing there for me to go into, but uh, I'm gonna go around first, see if there's anything else. Especially with like little windows there and you can just look out while you're in bed. I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. Oh yeah, it was Milton then. when he went missing and he could do that at 11 that's impressive Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. when Milton disappeared. Hmm. What, oh, is, is this literally just going to be a mystery then? Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Just vanished one day. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Oof, dangerous. first, so there was an extra floor here. Come into this room. I'm guessing this is maybe Edith's room. See, that one I'd like. 
something up there. Perilously dangled over the edge. I would not like. Not a fan of heights. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. That smell, I imagine. Script Games Console, the Wonderland Turbo. Hey, Mom, can we have a Nez? We've got a Nez at home. Nez at home. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Gamer, though. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to Wonder. Oh. Uh, this is interesting. I asked Doing him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Mm, big thing up there. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. That I'm kind of playing two mini games at once. But he found something more. Oh, isometric now. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. 
so I let him go on. I even encouraged him. Is she? It seemed very promising at first. Darko. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Hmm. Inventive. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. He's basically doing homebrew DD in his head. Day his imagination grew stronger. <laughs> he no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. I'm liking this minigame the best so far. It's very clever. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. Hugh Lewisville. St. Louis. <laughs> Clever. He started drifting away from our reality. <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... Oh. Bit of a choose your own. Beautiful prince. Prince was on his own quest for Let's go sinister serpents. Sinister serpents. Ah. Defeated. He followed the sound of his... Electric. 
Electric sitar. Electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Third person. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. This is definitely the best story yet. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. Get a good look at Lewis. It was hard to argue with him. Oh. He began to forget the world we know. Nondescript handheld gaming console. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Oh. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Not actually got any, um, any fish there, dude. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise calico who'd insisted on advising him. Wait, cat somewhere? Oh, there. Vibing Molly. waiting, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. Down his head. 
really don't want to. And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Hmm. So we're nearly at the end of um, the family tree. Only Dawn and Edie left. And possibly Edith. Okay. Oh, don't tell me that's the hat that he was wearing at the time. That's awful. And the prince is in there as well. I wonder if that was there when I first looked at that letter. Have to let me know. But yeah, I think this will be a good place to stop. Oh, he sat on that ball to play games. Weird. Um, yeah, good place to stop. We've already got a couple of the family left. Dawn and Edie. Assuming it does stop there. Because um, we kind of half touch on Sanjay, Sven and Kay. Like, obviously they're not being core family members, so... I'm guessing it won't go into their details as much. I'm still kind of confused what happened to Gus. I'm assuming he was sort of pulled out to sea rather than electrocuted. Um, and obviously we don't really find out what happens to Milton. He just vanishes. Uh, so I think next time will probably be the last one. But if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitch, which is linked in the description below. But for now, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.